This video will show the basics of installing a Chase Cold Guard Cooler Single Slide Manual Door. It will also be helpful for freezer door applications. Please read and understand the installation instructions. This video is not intended to replace that manual, which includes important safety information. Always practice safe lifting techniques throughout the entire installation. Now let's get started. Installation will require the following tools. Pry bars, C-clamps, wrenches, hammer, electric drill, vice grips, drill bit set, hammer drill, level, rubber mallet, tape measure, utility knife, tin snips or scissors, caulking gun, and optional shims. Also, depending on the size of your door, lifting equipment may be required. Before starting, measure the opening width and height and confirm that there is adequate clearance for the door to slide. Using a level, confirm that the opening is square and plumb. Verify that the door is level at the opening and in the slide plane. Determine if the door is to be lagged to the wall or through bolted. In this case, we will show the door being through bolted. Carefully unpack the crate and lay the parts out on the floor. Enclosed will be the header assembly, face casings, mirror casings when ordered, and a hardware box which includes the installation instructions. Identify the lead edge casing. This will be the casing with the rubber gasket installed on it. Put a bead of caulk on the wall side of the face casing nearest the door edge. This should be done on all of the casings around the perimeter of the opening, inserting a seal between the casing and the wall. Place the lead edge casing against the wall at the edge of the opening on the closed side. The dowel pins should be facing upward. Temporarily secure the casing using a large C-clamp. Use a level to make sure that the casings are straight and plumb. This will aid in aligning the dowel pins, which slip into the header later in the installation. While installing the casings, you will also simultaneously be installing mirror casings, if applicable, on the opposite side of the wall. Permanently attach the casing to the wall using the fasteners provided. Next, install the trailing edge casing along the trailing edge of the door opening, repeating the steps from the leading edge installation. Note, the vertical jam casings must both be level with one another and be mounted to the highest point of the floor. If necessary, use shims to move the casing up. It's now time to install the header and complete our vertical casing installation. This will require two people and may require lifting equipment depending on the door size. Carefully set the header in place lowering it onto the dowel pins found on the vertical casings. As with the vertical mirror casings, the header mirror casings should be aligned on the opposite side of the wall when applicable. At this point, it may be necessary to adjust the position of the trailing edge vertical casing slightly to align the pins. Lightly secure the header and mirror casing into place with a large C-clamp. Gently tap the mirror casings with a rubber mallet if necessary to align with the opening. Check to make sure the header is level. It's important to check the level against the header casing, not the aluminum track, as this is sloped. There are two rows of holes in the header, one going through the track and the other just below it. Drill and install 3 8 inch fasteners in all holes. Tighten the fasteners using caution not to over tighten and distort the header or mirror casings. Confirm trailing edge casing is still plumb and install remaining fasteners. Be sure and clean any debris left in the track from drilling the holes. The next step is to install the door on the track. Starting from either end of the rail, slide the roller assembly onto the track. Be sure the bolts are loose to ensure the lower bracket slides up and down on the upper bracket. Carefully position over the two studs and lower into place. Install flat washer, lock washer, and nut. Do not tighten at this point. Repeat these steps for the second roller assembly. 
Loosen the two Phillips screws and slide the gasket to the front of the panel so you can see 1 8 to 1 16 inch gap between the rub rail and panel. The trolley hanger should be parallel with the track. Next, we're going to install the floor guide. This should be done with the door in the closed position. Place a straight edge under the door so that it is against the inside edge of the opening. Push the door in towards the wall so that it just touches the wear rail. With the Chase Cold Guard door, you do not force the door tightly against the casings. Slide the door guide into the channel under the door so that it touches the straight edge. Mark the slotted hole so that the anchors will be installed in the slots as far away from the wall as possible. This will allow you to properly adjust the door for adequate clearance. Drill the floor for wedge anchors at the spots previously marked. Install the anchors into the floor. Tighten the nuts. Following this procedure should give you the correct clearance between the door and the wall and allows for adjustment if necessary. The next step is possibly the most critical when installing Chase cold storage doors. Unlike traditional cold storage doors with down and in motion, Chase uses a three-point system which eliminates premature wear of the gaskets. This system consists of two rollers and the floor guide allowing the door to seal properly and operate easily. When adjusting the door, make sure it seals on all four sides. Loosen the bolts on the hanger brackets and adjust the door panel so that it seals properly to the leading and trailing edge casings. Making sure the door is in the fully closed position, adjust the jack bolt to achieve the proper height of the door. The door should be parallel to the seals from top to bottom and pressure against the seals should be consistent. You may need to adjust one or both of the hangers to achieve this. The door should also be adjusted at this point so that there is an adequate seal to the floor. If the door needs to be moved up or down, make sure that the adjustment is consistent from side to side, maintaining equal pressure against the vertical gaskets. Tighten down the lockdown bolts. Tighten down the hex nuts and fasten the hanger trolley to the panel. When tightening the nuts on the roller brackets, hold the brackets so the roller is aligned properly in the track. Adjust the hold closed bracket so that there's adequate pressure between the door panel and vertical seals. Once properly adjusted, make sure that the bracket is securely tightened in place. Check to make sure that the door is sealed on all four sides. The top of the trailing edge gasket should now be carefully trimmed so that it notches around the horizontal wear rail. Make the final adjustments to the gasket squares on the leading and trailing edge of the door panel. Both top corners have an adjustable square seal. Loosen the two screws and adjust the gasket so that it fits tightly against the wear rails. The mounting holes in the casings are countersunk to allow installation of plastic caps. These caps help prevent thermal transfer and provide a clean look. Install these caps on the face casings and mirror casings when applicable. Open and close the door several times, making sure that the door operates easily. Once again, confirm that the door hold close bracket is properly adjusted. Remove any protective coatings on the door. Use a clean cloth to wipe away any grease or debris left from installation. If this is a cooler door, your installation is now complete. If this is a freezer, there are just a few more steps. All electrical work should be performed by a qualified electrician in accordance with all applicable codes. The door heater has been pre-wired to the SJO cord attached to the door panel. Insert the cord through the strain relief into the junction box on the header. Wire the hot, neutral, and ground wires to the terminal strip inside the box. Bring supply power into the same junction box and connect to the terminal strip in the same fashion. Do not turn the power on to the heater until the freezer is in operation. Failure to do so will cause the heater to fail. We hope this video was helpful. For more information on Chase products, visit our website at www.chasedoors.com. Thank you.